thanks for staying with us. The House of Representatives has mandated its Committee on Petroleum Resources downstream to organize an investigative hearing to ascertain the true state of the Port Hackett refinery, which the federal government has approved the sum of $1.5 billion for rehabilitation. Well, discussing with me is Public Affairs Analyst Alesta Wilcox. Good evening to you, Alesta. Thanks for joining us on Plus Politics. Finally, yeah, thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. All right. Now, it's been over a week or almost a week right now since the Federal um, Executive Council approved that, that particular sum. And it has generated, you know, mixed reactions from certain quarters, from analysts, from economists, from politicians as well. But just how do you react to this? Because a whole lot of Nigerians are saying that uh, it is not a wise decision. What are your thoughts? Well, I have had cause to contribute on the debate uh, because um, I do not uh, have all the information regarding to how the figure was arrived at. If the figures we are worked out through a process of uh, uh, proper procurement processes, then I will not have a quarrel about it. I, I don't have the background information, but if I take it from the top, I want to think it's, uh, it is a bad decision for you to go and spend 1.2 billion era, uh, dollars, uh, 1.5 billion dollars in uh, a moribund refinery. But what is the alternative? Uh, we've had issue of uh, refining products in this country. And uh, I do not think that government has the wherewithal to build a fresh refinery from scratch, from scratch. So the best way is to manage what we have and see how we can bring it to, uh, to par with the uh, current realities. Because uh, most of those uh, refineries are so obsolete. The technology is bad. I mean, must have, uh, must have gone beyond certain uh, level. And so it will need total overhaul, not turn around, but total overhaul. Um, the alternative in building a new refinery, for now, I don't think the economy can afford it. Maybe when we are selling the oil at $100 per barrel and above, if we have invested that kind of, if, if we have thought of refining then and invested that kind of money, then if I, have, I said then, but now uh, there is so much demand around the world. There is so much demand, uh, there is so much demand around the country for resources. And so going to put uh, something in the neighborhood of about 10 to 12 billion to build a new refinery will be a no-no. So what we have now is to see how we can manage what we have today at a very minimal cost. So that's why, uh, notwithstanding the fact that I have my reservation about spending that kind of money, that the uh, House of Rep is interested in probing, of course, let it be a genuine interest in probing the real, to get the real cost, because most of them know even that these things are padded, to get the real cost of this refinery, uh, repair this refinery, I think Nigerians should be better off for it. All right, uh, you've, you've talked about uh, uh, turnaround maintenance and all of that, but in 2019, the refineries uh, uh, reportedly lost 167 billion naira in a nine uh, consecutive month period, uh, with the Port Harcourt refinery alone losing 33.31 billion naira. Also, in February this year, the federal government proposed selling at least 34 uh, national assets, including the refineries, to raise money to finance uh, the 2021 budget. Many Nigerians are calling for an outright sale of uh, these refineries, uh, or maybe the Port Harcourt refineries. Do you agree to that particular proposal? No, I, I do not agree. Well, I will have agreed to the point of selling the refineries. Uh, if, if, as at the time, uh, a passenger uh, sold, sold the, the Patagon refinery to Dangote in 2006, if that sale has been allowed to stay, uh, if not the fact that uh, my people, because I'm from River State, my people and a lot of other people were, uh, were, were wiser than half by insisting that that sale be, 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 be reversed, and that why would Dangote buy a refinery in Patagon? I mean, Ethnic correction came into rather than, rather than looking at the business uh, prospect of having a refinery being sold and being made use of. We are looking at ethnicity, we are looking at uh, with the person of Dangote and all those trash that, as far as I'm concerned, today we should bite in our fingers. And, and uh, sadly, it was, it was a move by reverse people and a lot of South South people who felt that that refinery should have been sold. If it has been done then, I'm sure the people of Rasta will be better off for you today. 
the, that refinery will have been working because Dangote would not have gone to come to Lagos to spend about $12 billion or more to build a refinery in Lagos. And now Lagos will benefit in terms of taxes, in terms of commerce, and all whatnot. Now, the potential refinery within which our people, our South South people, we are clamoring, why will we sell it to Dangote? It is more but now we are back to square one. Look, we need the refinery in the country. We oh. need the refinery in the country. All We've right. been importing fuel right in this of Abacha. Uh, under our passenger, uh, our basic government, nothing was done to refinery the main comatose. Yeah, that's why I came and reversed the sale based on petty uh, petty moves by the South South people. He reversed the sale and nothing was done to the refineries. On, as far as under good logic constitution, it was a free for all when uh, uh, what they call sub subsidy become the most scandalous, the most criminal aspect of our national life. People are collecting money for nothing done. And people are happy. Today, the chicken has come back to roost. Now, now we are all blaming Buhari government over this mess. It's built up a uh, process. To this point. Now, okay. it must be fixed because right. we can't continue to import petroleum products in perpetuity. Okay. We must, at some point in time, okay, take let's the talk about step the funding to fix now. Our so that we can start having domestic production. All right, I agree with you, uh, uh, Lester, but let's talk about the funding right now. Many Nigerians have actually queried uh, you know, the source of um, financing of the $1.5 uh, billion. And uh, the federal government said they do not intend to borrow all the funds to rehabilitate the refinery, which they say will be functional in 18 months. They said some of the money will come from the NNPC's internally generated revenue from the NPDC, and some of it will come from the federal appropriation, and just a little fraction will be from the African Export Imports Bank. But right now, the NNPC's internally generated revenue uh, goes to the uh, FAC, and uh, it is shared by the three uh, tiers of government. I want you to react to that. And plus, uh, do you really think uh, Nigerians uh, should be hopeful that in 18 months, these refineries will be functional, judging by what we've seen over the years? Well, um, if, I want, if, I, if I want to give some credence to, the, to this administration, uh, uh, prudency in fund management and the deployment of funds, I will be hopeful. Uh, we have seen them deploy funds in the railway sector, in the rail sector, and they've delivered railway, railway lines, especially the Lagos Ibadan railway line, which the funds were borrowed and they've been deployed. We've also seen how far they've gone with the Kaduna upgrade of the Kaduna uh, Abuja. I don't know, if, we, if, if we can lay credence to the fact that most of the funds that they've acquired, we're talking about the Suku, is it the Suku bond we're talking about that it is meant for certain rules, and we're seeing practically these rules have been rehabilitated and it's been and it's applied to. Now, is it the right cause? Is there corruption in it? I don't know. So if the government has sat down to work out this um, this uh, funding uh, mechanism, funding sources, and they've documented it. I will want to give benefit of doubt that uh, they are in for serious business. Because really and truly, um, if uh, NNPCs, uh, MNP has to source of, uh, the entire generated revenue of any through their business operation remains in NNPC. That's what they are using to subsidize fuel, uh, fuel imports. But the, the sale, of, sale of crude oil goes to a FAC account. But other businesses done by NNPC, they retain that earnings, and that is why they are using to fund some of the um, uh, for, for some of the uh, 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 subvention or some of the uh, uh, trading losses they incur in fuel uh, in the in the production of fuel. So it's a good source. And then if they say NPDC, yes, that's also another good source. I was even thinking they will have mentioned the dividends from um, from uh, LNG. If maybe they have used, if they, if they will have deployed the dividends they will have been deriving from L, uh, uh, NLNG to that project, they will have been co have more comfortable because that, that dividends will be enough to pay up that entire cost. Although it goes to the fact, but if government, it's really the government should know that a refinery for the country is not for the federal government, it's for the entire city, state. It's for, the, it's, for the, it's for the entire country. So I will give them because I have seen, I have personally seen that funds have been deployed. And there are evidences that these funds were not uh, were deployed rightly, and the project for which they deployed have been seen. We are seeing what's happening in Lagos Expressway. Okay. We are seeing what's happening in the uh, uh, Central Nigeria Bridge. We are seeing what is happening in all the roads, federal roads that have been, uh, uh, been worked on. They may be slow, but at least they are being delivered. If others right, are start. much like this government is doing, I think we will not be where we are today. So I will give credit to that, and I will believe. Thank you. 
able to do. But the National Assembly should put on their thinking cap and they should be selfless in this pursuit because this is a national security issue. Our energy must be fixed and that is what must be done. So let's hope that in 18 months, this government will still be in power in 18 months. All right, be Alester, be before we we'll let you go. Promise. Thank let, you. Alester, before we we'll let you go, now, do you have um, fears or concerns of uh, the issues of um, corruption uh, stemming uh, up in this particular, uh, you know, rehabilitation uh, from what we've seen over time? And of course, uh, a fraction, according to them, will be... Uh, sorry, sorry, I'm not hearing you. Sorry, I can't hear you. Can you come back with the question? All right. I asked uh, the question of uh, corruption, you know, coming up uh, in all of these uh, rehabilitation costs. Do you have fears or concerns? And then again, um, a fraction will be funded by the African Export Import Bank. Uh, do you really think at this particular time uh, we need uh, to keep on borrowing uh, when uh, there are fears that it will just heighten the inflation rate again in Nigeria? Okay, I'm, I am afraid we have lost them, a less that did, but that's uh, as much as we can take. I uh, would we'll take a short break, and when we return, I'll be giving you my take as regards the security situation and the 2023 general elections. Now, Nigeria should work on its security architecture so that VIPs feel s secure as well as other citizens. If we say Nigeria is not properly policed, just what sense is there in assigning so much security personnel to more privileged individuals? At the end of the day, Nigerians just want to sleep with both eyes closed and not worry about how safe the children are in school. And then again, we look forward to safe elections even as the 2023 approaches. And that's the size of the show. I am Justin Kadenye Plus. Politics returns at 7 p.m. tomorrow. Bye for now.